Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Usual and today I take you on a high desert adventure to forage for wild asparagus. We go over to one of my mother's neighbors who knows more about asparagus than I ever knew I wanted to know. And at the end, we take our harvest and we come back to the house and I make some delicious, very simple refrigerator pickles that are actually more keto friendly than pickles already are. Hey everybody, welcome to my usual homestead and we are here and in the middle of nowhere uh, looking for asparagus today. So uh, I didn't think I was going to find any, but we actually did find some. And let me go ahead and show you. It, they grow on the side of the road right next to the fence line. Let me flip this around so you can see. Here we go. Here it is. I thought I lost it for a minute. So we've got this asparagus spear right here. This guy, I'm going to go ahead and snap her off. We're going to take it with us. So this wild asparagus is few and far between, but... That's a long stalk. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. We're going to, that's a keeper. I'm going to keep going and just record whenever I find some more. But this is what you want to look for. I don't, there's no ferns here, but I wanted, I was expecting we we're going to find some ferns, but it looks like it's just going to be a single spear here, single spear there. I might get lucky. We might actually find a big patch, but well, I don't know. We're going to have to find out. I mean, well, let's keep, you mind if I keep walking? No, keep okay, I'm gonna keep walking. Two hours later. Oh, another one. Oh, it's a big patch too. It's a big patch. Look at this guys, right through here. This is amazing. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and snap these dogs off right here. Let's go ahead and then we're just going to snap them off right at the, not too much off the top of the crown. Go ahead and just snap these right here. There we go. This is really good. I'm super happy about this. Woo! Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I'm going to have to share this with my mother. Hey, Mom, can you eat asparagus? No. Oh, yeah, I don't have to share it with you. Woo! Nice. This is a nice patch, right? Oh man, that's really cool. Look at this, guys. Hang on, let me get the camera right. Look at that. Look at this asparagus I just got. It's so cool. It's good. It's really good. There's another patch right next to this first one, guys. Look at this. Look at all this, man. Oh wow. It's right, in, right on the other side of these cattails I was just showing you guys. And I was like, wow, I don't know if we're going to find any. Well, that just snaps right off. That's a big, juicy boy. Here we go. There's another one. There's another one. I'm gonna snap these at the top so that it doesn't ruin the crown, guys, because you go too low, and besides, you go too low and it's too thick, it won't be good. Won't be any good. Look at that, oh, look at this monster. Oh, man, I got, I got a little shadow, but you know what, look at those monster asparagus. This is crazy. Oh, dig, 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 come on, boy. Right there, oh, that's good. And then, oh, that's a little tough. There we go, that one. And then this one. Oh my gosh, guys. Let's go ahead and get these cattails out of here. Look at this. Look at this monster, monster. Oh man, this is crazy. Let me just, I'm gonna walk the back side of this fence and see if maybe we might get lucky. This is what foraging is all about. You never know what you're gonna get. Life is like a, bo a box of asparagus. You never know what you're gonna get to you. Get into the cattail patch. All right, now this, I don't know if this is indicative of, of, of asparagus growth or not. Probably not, but because it was on the edge of the cattail patch. I'm not seeing any more guys. I won't get too deep into it. We're gonna go the other way. These rushes are awesome though. We'll be using, we'll be doing something with cattails in the future video on the channel for sure, for sure. By the way, talk about my weight loss. 
this um this little walk right here is getting me out of breath i'm not you i've been inside for five years so we're definitely definitely good for us but not something i'm used to after so many years but we're back in the saddle again so this will become a regular thing i don't see any more cattails here guys i mean any more uh, asparagus here guys so i think we're going to continue on down the road and see what we can get i'll uh i'll start recording if i find anything obviously so yeah we'll be right back so anyway guys uh, this is what i was talking about my mom's my mom's craft shop uh, i'm gonna show you more in a second but first i wanted to show you hey toto come here toto this is my mom's dog toto my mother uh, asked that she not be filmed just because she she's like i don't have my face on i don't want to get filmed but this is my mom's dog toto toto come on don't go outside come on come on mama wants you out okay come on he's a service dog so he didn't listen to anybody but her so he look at this he just like he doesn't want anything to do with me. He says, hey, you know what? You were so friendly. He's like, yeah, but mom's going to be back in a second. I know she will. My mother's in the restroom right now. Anyway, so uh, this is my mother's workshop. It is freaking, she got everything in here, man. That's her uh, her vinegar. She uh, she has a, a stall at the uh, farmer's market. That's where, that's just some of her vinegar that she sells. She's getting away from that because she's doing the cards and she's doing other artwork. Her real work actually happens back in here and i don't know if you can actually see this because it's kind of dark i don't know if the camera's going to pick it up but this is my mom's workshop in here i don't know if there's a light i can turn on yeah there is let me turn this light on right quick you can see some of the stuff my mother does never mind it's not turning on no uh, you know what you can see some let's go ahead and do it this way this is some of my mom's stuff that she does this is her this is where she makes her art her dried flowers for her bookmarks and all the other things that she does she does uh wall she does uh wall hangings she does greeting cards she does bookmarks she goes out collects wild flowers she dries them and then she puts them all together so all right we got a, a neighbor of my mom's that has some asparagus we're gonna go check it out he said he said we could come check it out so wild asparagus so he didn't cultivate it yeah. well, they kind of do. oh yeah i totally see it now he's right here and he's got it looks like he's got it covered well for against um i don't know why i want to ask him why i guess it would grow right through there's probably birds i imagine i'm not really sure that's the asparagus right there he's got a bunch growing up here this is cool this is really neat all right yeah this is awesome some more over here it's cool there's another piece right in here yeah nifty yeah so what, what's the, what's the, what's the deal with the, the netting over the asparagus huh? what, what's the deal with the netting over the asparagus the, the, just keep birds out or yeah I keep the deer out. oh the deer out I see Probably why it's not along the fence. The yeah, deer the deer eating it. I don't I haven't seen any down there anyway. Boy, there's some, there, we found some big stalks. Yeah, big stalks. but it was right next to a cattail patch. Yeah, it takes a long time. That's what I was wondering because we found one piece uh, on the other side of the road and it was just long and stringy, but the other, these other ones were really thick and, and, and hefty. So I'm not filming, I won't film you guys. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Is it okay if I film you guys? Can I, you want to say hello to the channel there, Leo? No. You don't? Okay, Leo said no. Neither one of us are too fond of the camera. That's fine. I don't care. I got yeah. my dress up close. Not about, it's not about anybody. It's all about me. Okay. Well, take two, <laughs> take two pictures of you. <laughs> well, no, I just recorded your, your asparagus patch because that's what we're doing today. I have some of that mesh. Well, I'm wondering if it'll keep the birds away from my berry bushes this year. It probably would. Uh, that's when the fence went up for the asparagus this time. It's like, oh, look at the yeah. crop. And I'll get them tomorrow. It's already afternoon. You're supposed to pick asparagus in the morning. The next morning, there was zip. Oh. They had strip. It was like, oh, there went dinner. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? What about along this fence line? Then they sprayed it really heavy with big weed killer. Oh, never mind. I, we don't want I that. I still harvest asparagus there because it was two years ago. So there is asparagus along this yeah. fence line. Mm -hmm. Are you say? Are you are you finding that it's on the um, on the on this side of the fence or on the other side of the fence or yeah, in the middle? Split the difference. Okay, so it's just it's right on the fence line. Why is it? What do you think that is? Because the cows can't walk on the fence line. Uh, okay. Yeah, now it is very well versed. 
lot of things. You and I have talked on the phone. <laughs> we have talked on the phone. Yeah. There's one. There's a spat. There's, it's been harvested though, right? But yes. That's a patch. Oh, well, that's been eaten off. Oh, it's been eaten. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, harvested. Dear. I harvested and then they harvested. Sometimes I think about it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You see there. And that's the dried down. stock from last year. In the fence, yeah. Yeah, the fern from last year. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's that, guys. Yeah. That's cool. And I leave them there on purpose. The big stakes there on purpose so that I could run this well, Yeah, good call. And this is one, but she's only. He was big, big there's last year. Little one right here on the other side of the fence. Yeah. And Right, and then well, and then uh, there's, there's a the stock there. Yeah, and then after that it belongs. So we're probably, I, I mean, the but they've been growing for the last, the last. Oh, uh, been here for years. No, I mean, I mean for this season for yeah. the last couple of weeks, right? Um, and so we've got another. I would say two weeks they've been coming up. And we've got another two, another four, six weeks. Probably, yeah. It's about eight week season, right? Yeah, I don't even know what varieties mine are. Some are wilds. Raymond collected on his bicycle on his way home from work uh the little red berries oh oh you brought the, the seeds asparagus. yeah right 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 brought them home put them in a tray had over 400 500 plants are you kidding me yep just put them in that's a amazing and what took, but... him, took him to somebody's house that said they wanted them all so i don't know if they're raising asparagus or just eating big on asparagus do you remember what month that was that he collected those berries that would be towards the end of the year, September-ish. Okay. August. So the ferns end. have grown up. They, they've gone to seed. Yeah. So it does take that long for, the, yeah. for them to go to seed then. And usually he picked them after they'd finished their red phase and had gone into their yellow-orange dried stage. That is and what just... I saw on the road, is that yellow-orange stage. Okay. Yeah. That they are... The berries get That's... to yellow-orange when they ripened. And then they're dry, and he just stuffed them in his pocket and kept emptying his pocket. Put them in a tray and and it was I'm <laughs> really just looking to, to to germinate some some asparagus this year. That'd be amazing. But you have to, you'd have to overwinter them though. I guess you would just we don't. They get nothing here. Okay. Yeah. Right. I they mean, get yeah. And, over I mean, we're we're in high desert, so I mean, there's yeah. not. It's not like there's a lot of rain. I, we've already had one meal, one full meal, and then we had uh, got another jar. We actually have enough for a meal. So it's been harvesting. Yeah, awesome. Okay, guys, this is the final result of the asparagus. So as you can see, it's about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds of asparagus. And these are pretty, this is pretty good size asparagus too. So, I mean, we're talking, uh, I'm gonna make, we're gonna make pickles today. So with this, so I've got at least two jars worth of pickles worth. Uh, what I'm gonna do is they've already been washed, they've been dried. And I've got other vegetables I'm going to add to this. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to lay down this. I'm going to lay down this ball jar. I'm going to just see. We want a little bit of space. Like right here. We want a little bit of space. And then we've got. I'm going to open this jar up. These jars have been washed. They have been sanitized. If you do not wash and sanitize your jars. You are. Um, you're opening yourself up to uh, food poisoning. So you want to go ahead and you want. Botulism is a bad thing. So, and so is salmonella, and so is E. coli, and these were gathered around livestock. So you want to make sure that everything is um, as clean as it can be. So we'll trim the ends off here. Just throw them in the bottom because I don't want them to go to waste. We'll trim these just about there. I'm going to have to let these set for a week, and then I'm going to test them in a future video. Okay, now that I've got my asparagus set up just like this, we're going to go ahead and take some green beans. I got some green beans from my harvest last year. We'll go ahead and we're just going to plop these in here. If they're a little too long, we're going to take them. We're going to chop off the ends. Now, these were already frozen, so they're coming out a little soft out of the freezer. So I don't know how these are going to be either for pickles, but we're going to go ahead. Hopefully, you know, they'll uh, they'll taste good. If they're a little soft, I'm not too worried about it. I guess you could put some alum in your in your in your pickling, but I wouldn't suggest it. I'm doing as little as possible to process these. And I'm also going to alter the recipe a little bit this uh, this time around so that we have um, no sugar in this. There's not going to be any sugar in this. Really, the only thing you need for a pickling recipe is you need water, you need vinegar, you need salt. That's it. You don't need anything else, but everything else is optional. If you want to put sugar in yours, you can. I'm going to go a different direction. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go over this uh, this jar over here. It has stevia from last year that I grew. 
I'm going to throw, instead of sugar, I'm going to throw a couple of stevia leaves in there. Now, um, we've got two garlic cloves right here. Boop, boop. We're going to put one in here. We're going to put one in here. And let's see, I'm going to put a little onion in this. I want onion slices. You can do however you want. And I want, you know, probably, I don't know how much I want, really. That might be enough. A quarter onion might be enough for me. I'm going to place these in here. Just like so. Tap them, tap them. Get them down in there. I might do the whole onion. I want to fill these jars up. Because I don't want to waste any space. Because I don't want to make more brine than I really need to make. People try to get all fancy on YouTube videos. I'm not going to worry about it too awful much. I think I might want... You know what? I've got some room left in here. Let's, let's finish this onion up. There we go. Finish this onion up. Shove it in there. What we'll do is we will shake these around after we're done to get these all mixed up. We're going to need to put a little ginger in here. I got a little ginger piece here. I like me some ginger. Pickled ginger is amazing. You can go as thick or as thin as you want. It all depends on what when you put it in your mouth, how much ginger you're, gonna, you're willing to eat. I'm going to throw that end off. I'm going to throw that end away. Now, remember, when you use items like garlic and ginger, they're going to be super, super strong. So this is going to have a very strong ginger flavor to it. Very strong ginger flavor. I want some carrots. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and put them in the four corners of the jar. But just shake this around so I can get a little bit more room. That'll do for that one. Okay, so ideally you're going to want to have it like right below, right at this line right here if you can, or lower. These guys, I'm going to have to squish these down. And if they break, I'm not concerned about it because it's going in my stomach. It's not from not selling this. I don't really care to impress anybody. I don't really just didn't, it doesn't matter to me. So there we go. That's done. We're going to take this ball jar right here. Let me clean off my, my board here. A clean station is a happy station, as they say. All right, now that we've got these, we're going to move these back a little bit. Let me take Mr. Gnome over here. Hello, Mr. Gnome. That's Mr. Gnome. He guards my stevia. And my stevia, let me go ahead and bring this to the forefront so you guys can see. I have a tiny workspace, if you can't tell. So I apologize. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. There we go. That's my stevia that I harvested. Oops, excuse me. That's my stevia that I harvested last year. We're going to go ahead and take this. And I'm just going to put a couple of leaves in here to sweeten it up like three leaves probably that might be a little much because steve is really strong let's not do three let's do two baby leaves like little tiny leaves like that and it's not focusing but two baby little stevia leaves just to get the sweetness working you don't need much stevia is super strong i will be doing a stevia video and a comparison video in a future video so but that said video three times that's amazing all right put this right back is I'm going to go over to my Berkey right quick. I've got a Berkey water filter and I'm going to get two cups of water. Okay, two cups of water. All right, let's move this back. We've got our two cups of water right here on the line. Looks like a little bit more, but that's okay. You need about, let me jump, dump a little bit of this out. You want a 50 50 split between your vinegar and your water. You need at least 50 50. And what I'm using right here is just a Kroger brand. Distilled vinegar, 5% uh, acid strength. It's, it's common white vinegar. That's all I'm using. And I'm just going to take this and we're going to just fill this up to the four cup. So it's two cups of water, two cups of vinegar. That is your pickling solution except for salt. And with salt, there is a big, big uh, distinction between recipes. Some say two teaspoons all the way up to a quarter cup. Let me show you that. That's a quarter cup. I'm not using a quarter cup of salt in my stuff, not for two jars, no way. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna use iodized sea salt. So, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna use a tablespoon. We're just gonna do one tablespoon in this solution. That's gonna be plenty of salt, I think. That's good enough. That's about a tablespoon. We're gonna just throw it in there. Now, there are different thoughts on, uh, on, your, on your brine. Now, some people say uh, you wanna you want to boil your, your brine but I don't want to cook these vegetables. I want it to be as least processed as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid back on. Some people just say you got to warm it up. Basically, you just have to dissolve the salt in the water. So we're just going to shake it up. Put the lid back on. By the way, this has been sanitized. This has been washed. So be aware, food, uh, food cross-contamination is a thing. It's also the reason why I'm wearing gloves. You'll always see me wearing gloves whenever I'm making a, a video and I'm cooking because I don't want to cross contaminate anything. I'm trying to show you, I may not do that in real life, but I want to show you good practice. So that's what we're doing for. That's what we're doing this for. Okay, so 
There we go. Now we've got our solution. That's vinegar and water mixed up with the salt. We're just going to pour this over the top and let's check. If I get about to the halfway mark, it should be about two cups each. And if it isn't, if it's a little bit less, you can top it with water. Like I said, you need that solution to be, uh, be about 50, 50. If it's a little less, it's not really that big a deal, but I mean, you can't use like a tablespoon of vinegar and expect to make pickles. You just can't do it. Got my hand over the camera there. Sorry about that guys. So that's about right. That's pretty close. Now I can use a little bit of water just to top this off like so it's not much. So still, we're still pretty good. So now that's going to be our pickles. Now, if it's above that water line, you got to push that down. You got to push that down. Cause, and oh, by the way, they're talking, you know, they're talking about, I say they, I mean, scientists have been looking into, um, into fermented foods and how it helps your gut health and how it helps your diet. And I am in the process of, of being on a keto diet, which I broke last night, but on a keto diet for like five months now. And I've, I've gone from 215 pounds to 181 pounds now. I'm 181 pounds right now. So this is, I mean, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna shake this up. Check this up, put that lid on nice and tight. Check this up. I might want to top this all the way up to the top with water. This might not be enough water, but I want to get this, I want to get this nice and shook up and get that, get all these pieces nice and covered and mixed up. Yeah, I think I do want to add a little bit more water to this just to cover. You see these things guys are popping up. We want to, we want to make sure this, I'm going to put this all the way to the top. This is not going to ferment. So I'm not worried about it. It just pickled. This is the thing. There you go. See what happened here? It popped up. So we got to want, I got to push that down. We got to fill this to the top. And we're only going to be, this is only going to be in the refrigerator. These are refrigerator pickles, right? So this is only going to be in the fridge for a small amount of time. It takes at least a week to pickle them. And some of this will break down too over time. So it's going to get, it'll sink. But where it's only going to be pickling for a week and then they're good for a month. Now I, they say a month, but you can actually, I've, I had pickles in my fridge for two or three months and they're still fine, but be aware the longer you, you, the longer you have things floating around, the more, the more you um, open yourself up to bacteria and food, food, food illness. So, but you know, I washed, so these are sanitized and washed. All my vegetables have been washed uh, and dried thoroughly. Uh, this was a, a clean jar. You want to make sure you have clean jars that you're working with, clean tools that you're working with. Uh, that's pretty much it on pickles, guys. That's super easy to do. So these are my asparagus pickles with other vegetables. And in a week, when I next week when I do videos, I will uh, talk about this. I will taste them on camera, and we'll see if the stevia sweetened them enough, if the ginger was too much, because I think it might have been a little bit too much ginger, but I love ginger. And if I maybe I want, wanted to put another clove of garlic in each one of these, because I only have one clove of garlic in each one of these, and two is probably good for a quart. That's going to be awesome. And the whole thing about this is, this is the whole point. The whole point behind me making these is I could, I could have sauteed these up, right? We could have had these with a meal. But what this does now is this, may, this is a snack for me on my keto diet that I can go ahead and I can, um, I can reach in, open the lid, Grab a grab a, a carrot stick or a or a asparagus st um, stalk or some onion, and I can eat that. And when your body's when you're not hungry, but your body's telling you, "I want a snack," you need something. And so this is my my stopgap between myself and sugar, or myself and carbohydrates, or myself and whatever. That's why we didn't want to. I didn't want to put sugar in here. If you do put sugar in your brine for this amount right here, this amount right here. Um, I think they say it's about a quarter cup of sugar. So a quarter cup of sugar in this container for two of these, I, I'm just getting rid of it because I'm using stevia. So, all right, guys, well, that's my, fr those are my, those are my fresh pickles. All right, we'll just wipe these off so that we don't have any lingering things. And I'll just put those right in the fridge, guys. All right, well, all in all, that was a pretty cool day. I got to hang out with my mom. We got to do some foraging, learned a lot about asparagus that I didn't even know. And I got to make myself a snack for my keto diet and my, my own weight loss journey. So hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it inspired you in some way. If it did, 
give us a thumbs up. And if I've earned your subscription, don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications. As I always say, I am my usual me. You be your usual you. And we'll see you in the next episode of My Usual Homestead. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.